Hello everyone. So, uh, due to the holiday, I haven't been reading as much, but I did want to give an update over or on some of the books that I've read over the last two weeks. However, with Thanksgiving in there, I hadn't read enough to really make any videos about what I read that week because I was spending time with family and I don't always get to see them. So I just wanted to spend time with them and not spend uh, any time reading. So this is just a brief update of what I read over the last two weeks and some thoughts about those books. So I actually read three very small books because I was working on some of my other hobbies over the last two weeks, but they were pretty interesting books. So the first book I read was, ooh, that glare again, <laughs> How English Became English by Simon Horbin. And this was an interesting book. I wound up giving it three stars, and it is exactly what you think it is. It's a book that describes the journey of the English language, some of the changes, how grammar changes, some of the ways grammar has changed, um, what determines what is correct in a language, uh, the role of dictionaries, and it, for being kind of small, it actually did pack a lot of information in there, and I couldn't read this in one sitting. I wound up reading this over a number of sittings just because there was a lot of interesting facts and things that sent me down little rabbit holes in, of uh, googling one thing after another. So this was a pretty good book. However, I feel like I wanted more out of this. I feel like I say that a lot with many books. I just wind up wanting more out of it. And I just wanted more out of it, or I wanted a detailed focus on one of the one or two of the specific topics. So I wound up giving it a three star. However, I think this is a very good start. Um, I will say that the author is from, yes, yeah, so he's a professor of English language and literature at the University of Oxford, and he spends quite a bit of time talking about British English. Uh, and obviously there's a lot more varieties of English spoken than British English, but Britain is where English originated, so it makes sense to start there. Um, but yeah, that was just something that I noted. It was very, very interesting, but if I wanted something a little higher quality, a four-star read, I might take a book that does a deeper dive into uh, a specific topic. And I noticed that a lot about myself when I read a book that tries to cover a wide variety of topics, I tend to gravitate that towards that more when I'm beginning a topic I'm not very familiar with and I need a base knowledge of it, kind of like this book that I have handy because I haven't returned it to the library yet because the library just opened today. Uh, the Mesopotamia, The Mighty King's Book. This was very small and it was very general and it was, a, it was an overview and I gave it a three stars, but I need these kind of books to give me a baseline knowledge. However, they're not going to be standout books. They're not going to be books I necessarily remember in a couple years, but I do think they have a very important place to provide that baseline knowledge. So I did not enjoy any of my English classes in school. I did not enjoy language in general in school, um, and I particularly disliked grammar. Uh, but as I've become an adult, I've realized there are some just interesting and fun features. Uh, in grammar and it's interesting to learn grammar of other languages um, and just seeing how the grammar that we use today in English how it came about was interesting interesting enough um, so this was a three-star read uh, pretty good um, good good baseline knowledge I'm gonna stop pulling this up because it has a reflection good baseline knowledge but nothing special nothing that I'm going to remember so the next book I'm going to talk about is part of my reading topic in nonfiction where I'm reading a lot of books about Michigan history and I think going deep on a specific topic maybe gives me a more more appreciation of the topic um, which is why I'm trying to do more specific re more specific reads in literature which on that topic, I'm trying to do a read on Mesopotamia and the ancient civilizations that are contained in Mesopotamia uh, back in, back way way back in the day, 3000 BC. However, I discovered after doing a little bit of looking that I have already basically read or am currently reading everything that my library system has, so I'm going to have to find an alternate route to getting books on that topic. But one of my other topics, which my library has an entire row of books dedicated to, is Michigan history. So I read in the Grip of the Whirlwind, which is the Armistice Day Storm of 1940 by Tom Powers. Tom Powers is actually a um, librarian, I think it was, in 
Flint, Michigan. So he does live in Michigan, and he wrote a book on this topic because if you read in the beginning, he was researching about this topic himself, and he found that no one had written a comprehensive book. And this was just a book, or not a book. This, this book covers a storm that swept across the Midwest, which was kind of this converging of several storms across America, um, the continent, and how that affected particularly that Midwest section. Um, and so this, this I say Michigan, but there was a lot of coverage of Minnesota, especially Minnesota, Wisconsin, and then Michigan, um, and Chicago, so Illinois. Uh, not necessarily just the state of Michigan. This was just filed in the Michigan history section, which is how I found it. So they talk about kind of how this happened. This was 1940, obviously, as done or as noted by the cover. And in 1940, they just couldn't track weather accurately and quickly enough to tell everyone in advance what the forecast was going to be when things changed. And I think he kind of knows that it would be unlikely for us to see, not necessarily the weather, the weather is obviously, that could happen again, but we would be much more prepared and we would be more knowledgeable that it was coming and we were prepared. One of the things they talk about in this book is it was duck hunting season and a lot of hunters went outside on the morning this swept through, um, particularly in Minnesota. And it was a warm day. They were wearing t-shirts. Um, they didn't know there was anything coming and then temperatures dropped to deadly temperatures and people wound up dying of exposure because they couldn't get to safety fast enough. They talked about duck hunters going back across the water from being on islands and the ice freezing their boat into place. Um, they talk about a lot of ships that were sunk on the Great Lakes, which earlier this year I read a very interesting book which just kind of detailed uh, shipwrecks on Lake Huron and the, just the pure number and some of the dangers they have in this, uh, which was interesting. And you, because that was specific on shipwrecks, I kind of thought, well, that kind of covered all the, all the shipwreck knowledge that I need. And while it was very interesting, this book had some very good descriptions of what causes a ship to sink, particularly these big bulk carriers. Uh, and I really, really liked this. This made a lot of sense. This book grip me. I, th I think I read this in one sitting, and if it wasn't in one sitting, it was the kind of thing where you put a bookmark in, go make some tea or coffee, do a little chore, and then immediately come back because you want to finish the book so badly. Um, and this is only 164 pages. They do include some weather maps too um, near the end, but 164 pages of story. And this was a, a very interesting book. So they, they talk about shipwrecks, I was saying. They also talked about um, people who would get trapped where they were. Um, they talked about kids being trapped in a schoolhouse. Uh, one girl got dropped off at school, and then because of the storm, no one else showed up. So she was just there by herself. They talked about motorists who got stranded, and some of them who actually wound up dying because they couldn't They couldn't get to safety, like that their car just got snowed in on the highway, which to me that's like crazy. Like, well, what do you mean your car got like snowed in in the spot? How does that happen? But I was actually speaking with my grandparents recently, and they had that experience happen to them um, in Ohio, which is another Midwest state, I believe they said. So apparently this does happen. Um, my big concern the winter in terms of like exposure is if my car slides into a ditch, um, like if I hit ice and go off the road, I want to make sure that my car can keep running to keep me warm, but I don't think of like driving along and then just getting stuck because there's so much snow. Um, they talked about, I believe it was Minneapolis, um, and how long it took for them to dig out of the storm. Um, basically the, the lead up to the storm, it was, it was really nice and then almost immediately it got really bad and that's why everyone was just kind of caught out. Um, and ooh, I don't remember how many ships sunk um, with like sunk with all hands, but it was at least four I want to say. And they go through each one, they go through how they found the wreckage and they, they talk about the personal stories and give a little biographical information of some of the men on the ship, which is something that not necessarily the book on the shipwrecks of Lake Huron lacked, but it it makes it feel more real than just, and this ship went out and sunk in Lake Michigan, and then they found it three days later. If that doesn't give you that, I don't know, you, you 
sometimes lack that connection when it's when you're talking about these people who um and like their background and they were expecting a baby or they um they talked about one man in here who actually did not get on the ship um that he was supposed to get on because he couldn't stay away from his beloved he was going to get married or was already married to this woman and he said no go without me and if you didn't finish a season you forfeited a seasonal bonus a bonus for completing an entire season of shipping on the great lakes so he opted out and someone else took his place and unfortunately that man wound up going down with the ship um but the man who stayed with his beloved uh, I say beloved. I think that's the term the book used. It was either the person, he, the woman he was going to marry, or the woman he was recently married to. Um, they also tell about a, a small town in um, Ontario. Uh, so I should say this comes through. Uh, the storm comes through like Midwestern United States, but it also affects people in Canada, I would assume, too. Uh, and obviously, some of, a lot of the workers, or maybe not a lot, at least one of the ships that went down was Canadian and impacted people who live there, particularly because in one of the ships that went down that was Canadian had a woman's name. And I think they said it was the only ship at the time that had a woman's name um, on the Great Lakes or something like that. It was, it was noteworthy for its name. All the men on the ship were from one village or most of the men on the ship were from one village or one small town in Ontario because that's how you found jobs on ships. Someone got in and then everyone else, all, you'd get all the other men on the from the village to come in on the ship and work. So it was a huge blow to the community and actually reminds me of some of the stories I've heard of um, mining accidents where if there's a mine accident you could have 10, 20 people from one town just the men wiped out just like that and that's almost like what what it is just something that it reminded me in the head how an accident can take away such a, a large population of a village very quickly which can occur in things other than industrial disasters too uh, it was just i felt like that closely paralleled so i gave this one a four star this is a very high four star and i read this like a week ago so i'm i keep thinking about it and it might be, I don't know if it's a five star. It's a, it's the best book on the state of Michigan that I've read in a while. And this goes back to my comment about liking books that aren't as general. This is not everything that happened in Michigan from when the ice sheet, when the glaciers retreated to 2019. This is one specific storm that took place over two or three days or impact. He, he breaks it up by days and talks about like, oh, this is now Tuesday. Um, he So this only covers one event over a couple days, but I like those deep dives because I feel like I really get to know the story and I get to know a lot more. And I think you do need those general books to give you a baseline knowledge, which I actually haven't read a baseline book on Michigan, but I've lived in Michigan for a while. And I, I've accumulated a bit of knowledge because I've I'm the weird person who reads all the historical plaques and likes looking at old newspapers, so I'm not entirely useless in my knowledge of Michigan history. Um, so I feel like I maybe didn't... I do want to read a baseline history book, but unlike my reading challenge, I sh should say, about Mesopotamia, I didn't feel like I knew absolutely nothing and needed a baseline knowledge. So this so far has been my favorite book on Michigan history because first of all, this was something I didn't know about. I knew there was a big storm in ooh, 1913 um, that sunk a lot of ships. There is a memorial to it, um, I believe in Port Huron, right next to Sarnia, Ontario, um, the city that's across from it. Uh, so there, that's another storm I want to read about, but um, I had not heard of this storm, and yet it, it seems to be such a memorable event, so I wonder why I haven't heard of it. Maybe the distance, maybe because it happened in 1940 and there's not many people who remember it, but I, I almost want to find people and ask, like, do you remember this? Do you remember when this happened? Um, unfortunately, some of my family isn't from Michigan originally, so 1940 people weren't around, but I'm trying to think like who who would be around and remembering remembering things in 1940 that I know that might be able to recall um, this because this was just a fascinating book. I feel like this is the kind of book that 
your library might not have. This is probably hit or miss, especially because it's a small author from just a town writing about something he was passionate about. But this was a very excellent book and I highly recommend reading it. Even if you don't live in the Midwest, even if you don't live in the United States, even if you don't live on the American continent, um, it's very interesting like me like the meteorological event and like the convergence of all these bad factors and just the personal stories of people going through kind of a natural disaster um it, well it was a disaster because of human because humans didn't see it coming um and for a long time humans didn't see weather things like this coming so it also kind of makes you take for granted weather forecasting um typically they would they will warn you oh there's a massive snowstorm coming and even if the snowstorm isn't as bad as maybe they anticipate it being it's a lot better than the situation outlined in this book so very good book four stars obviously I had a lot of thoughts on it for only 160 pages so give it a read if you can get your hands on this I don't think you will regret it the third one I read this one was a little dull <laughs> practical statistics so I did my degree in math. I did a, a Bachelor of Science in Mathematics um, and that wasn't just to get a good job. That was, well, arguably I probably could have picked other things that I wanted to find a good job. Uh, that was because I just loved math. I got to college and I was like, wow, I don't, I don't ever want to stop taking math classes. And that has continued into my adult life where I never want to stop taking math classes in the sense of I never want to stop educating myself in mathematics because I find it a very, very interesting topic. So I four years of rigorous study and many exams has not made me dislike math. And um, yeah, so I do read a lot of books on math just for personal fun. My current library and the current library system in doesn't have a very good selection of math books for people reading for their own personal interest or maybe I should call it popular mathematics. They have a lot of like learn calculus, 250 calculus exercises, books aimed at people who are taking a course in math and need additional assistance to help or maybe like fifth grade math problems to teach your kid. I don't know about you, my parents always made me do extra math problems in the summer to like, and I wasn't even that bad at math I don't think. I feel like people were worse at math at me in school, although I wasn't really that good at math either. Um, that's another thing I should add, I'm not, I'm not particularly good at math, I just like it. Um, and they'd always get, there'd be these books about extra math problems to do to keep your brain sharp or something. My library has quite a bit of those, so if you're like a high school student, you can go get the help you need, which is very helpful. I'm not disparaging them at all for this. Uh, that's definitely a need and that's a purpose for the library. You can get free education assistance if you need it. If you're struggling with your calculus class or your fifth grader needs additional math problems, they have all the books for you. However, um, my particular branch doesn't have a lot for the general reader or people who um, maybe aren't in a course or don't want to just have a book of like 500 geometry problems. Um, but I am trying to read the books they do have. So this one was Practical Statistics. Now statistics made me cry. Statistics was hard, um, particularly this like calc-based statistics, which was like this year-long course, probability and statistics. That was a nightmare. I needed it to finish. I don't even know how I got an A in that course. That was very difficult. Um, and it's just an area that I feel like in a lot of aspects of life, we wonder, well, how am I going to use this in my everyday life? And while a lot of it is used around you and you may not realize it, statistics is something that we all see. We see it in the news. We see it um, advertised to us. It's used to sell stuff. It's used to report stories. And I think having a good understanding of statistics can benefit everybody. However, I'll be the first to say that my understanding of statistics is not wonderful. From someone who took courses in it. So I, I do like to read uh, books on statistics and probability when I get the chance. This one was written by a business professor. It's pretty small as you can see. Um, business professor, I want to say he has a PhD, it's Dr. L. Um, was this his full-time faculty member? Oh, I don't know. PhD student mentors PhD students in leadership and organizational change. Anyways, he does a lot of stuff with business. So the the focus of the book is how to use statistics to make choices in business. Um, and that's kind of where it came from. For that reason, I thought it was a little dull. I don't 
care about making good business decisions? Well, I do a lot because it's important, but I think statistics has a lot more application than just business choices. And I also felt as though um, the delivery was kind of dull in this book. It just didn't capture you. And as someone who really likes mathematics, who will read books that look like this for their own personal enjoyment, if it didn't capture my attention, it sure is not going to capture the attention of anyone who maybe dislikes math. Um, and there's a lot of good popular mathematics books that cover a lot of important topics, including books about statistics that, or, or probability, which is also covered in this book as well, uh, that cover these topics that do capture the attention, at least capture my attention, and probably much better or much easier or it'll capture the attention of people who aren't as necessarily drawn to the topic as me. So for that reason I gave it a three star. It's kind of a low three star. I'm not going to remember this at all. The few positive things I will say about this is typically a book that's this thin that's just an introduction or a primer is only going to cover the very very basics um, and kind of not talk down but it's going to really water things down. They're like, we don't want to get too complicated here. And there are a couple times in this book where he's like, well, the proof for this or the reason, the way this is derived is much too long to fit in a book like this, which is fair because when your book is like this and you're catering to an entry level uh, knowledge or maybe a business student who hasn't covered statistics yet, which is another person he advertises the book for, is it makes sense to not go into these long theories that explain how these were these properties were derived. That makes sense. I understand that a certain level of editing has to occur. Um, but what he does do really well is he goes much further. He takes on much more complicated topics than I might expect a book um, like this to take on. I would expect this to just be like averages, basic probability. That's basically like mean, median mode um, and probability. Basic, prob basic probability, like dice rolling, the end, was all I expected out of this book, and he actually went a lot further than that. So that was a very good, po a big positiveness, or big, <laughs> what was that? That was a really positive aspect, um, in my opinion, of the book. Um, he actually covered some things very succinctly that covered it better, um, particu particularly, okay, these are words that I've probably heard only once um, in my entire life spoken. So if I say these wrong, I promise I actually studied this. Um, man, I can't find it. Kurtosis, skew, that those topics related to that. I feel like my math textbooks it just went like they needed to go deeper. They were a math textbook. They needed to teach me some very basic, some um, some very important things about it. But if someone had handed this book to me, somewhere in my um, my learning student career, and had me read the page before going into the textbook, I feel like I would have a much better time, a much easier time understanding it. Because I remember reading that section of textbook and being like, this feels like there's a simple way to boil this down to get like the base level before we can start building. But they didn't explain it very clearly. And that might have just been the textbook I was using too. Um, so I thought he did that very well. Um, and yeah, this was this was a, a three-star book. I'm not going to remember it, um, probably. Uh, but it might have some use to you, particularly if, you, if you're interested in business and don't have much um, a knowledge of statistics, but don't want something that's just surface level. Maybe you want to cover a little broader um, bit of topic, a uh, number of topics. But yeah, this is... Uh, three stars. Probably not going to remember it, unfortunately. Now I will say, this week I have been reading, and it doesn't look like it because I, all re I read all those books last week. That's because I've read 600 pages of this bad boy, Words of Radiance, which I have in my planner that I need to finish by Friday, which means I need to read tonight and I need to read tomorrow if I want to get this done. Um, so yeah, I've actually done quite a bit of reading. I just have nothing to show for it yet because I don't have a finished book. But yeah, I'm really enjoying this book a lot so far. Um, I really, really like the first book and I'm liking the second book even more so far. We'll have to see. Um, I will say, um, if anyone has read this book, there was a chapter where one of the characters is learning how to ride a horse 
And that chapter, I don't know if I was tired. I don't know if something else was happening. Maybe I just completely read it wrong. That was so out of tone with the rest of the book. And not in a bad way. I thought it was kind of funny, but it just was written in a completely different tone, if you know what I mean. Some authors have, or all authors, there's a tone to their writing and it, you just, you're like, oh, that's them. Um, nothing wrong with it. And that doesn't mean like, oh, this is happy and this is sad, but more of, you can tell it's that author's voice speaking. This one chapter, which was now a couple hundred page, oh, maybe two pay hundred pages ago, completely out of tone to the point where I was like, did someone else write this? What is this chapter like? And it was, I, I don't, I don't know what, if anyone else knows what I'm talking about, I don't want to give away too many spoilers because I don't want anyone to know um, who survived. That's my big thing. When people are like ahead of me in the book, even if they say, oh, such and such, and I'm like, don't tell me because then I know that they're alive. So any danger this character is in between where I am now and where you are, I know is not serious. So don't tell me who's around. But there was a character learning to ride a horse and it, the tone was completely different from the rest of the book. And it switched as soon as the chapter was over, completely new tone. And I was like, what happened? What happened? Am I going crazy? So I'm the person I'm borrowing this book from. Hopefully I'm going to talk to them about it. Hopefully I'm going to finish this by Friday so I can talk to them about it and return the book. Uh, and I want to see if I'm the only person or if I'm going a little crazy. Because that was completely out of tone from the rest of this book. And not in a bad way, just completely out of tone. So I don't know if out of tone is even a real phrase. Anyways, I actually have to go return these books to the library because they opened today. Not full. They're doing like a curbside hold service pickup, which is probably smart. So uh, I do want to return these books. Even though they, they did this thing where they extended all the library holds until, or library due dates until the end of January, which was pretty nice because they keep shutting the library down for like restrictions and then it not makes sense to fine everybody for having books out. Uh, so I need to go return these these books because I still have all the books I read last week that I need to return. So anyways, oh, I forgot one more book that I did read. Um, it was an audiobook, so I can't show you because I already returned it, but I uh, downloaded them on my phone and I listen to them while I take walks or while I'm doing chores around the house. Uh, so I really like doing that, and that's also through my library. I don't pay for the books either. Um, this book was Bones Inside and Out by Roy A. Meals. Um, Four-star book. I didn't know I was interested in Bones. This is nonfiction. It's written by a doctor of Bones, osteopathic, whoever does Bones. He knows his stuff inside out, and he makes it really entertaining. Um, I feel like this is actually going to be a hit or miss with people. Some people might feel like he's being very irreverent or not serious, or they want a serious book. But that goes back to what, what tone you're looking for in a book. Like, if you want a very serious academic, I just want to know the facts and nothing else about Bones, there's definitely books like that out there. And this one does give a lot of facts and actually doesn't sh uh, shy away from some of the medical terminology, but it does do it with a little bit of humor, provides a lot of fun facts, talks about the history of the medicine of bones, um, as well as the actual science and happenings of bones. So I listened to that one and it was uh, the kind of audiobook where when I start it, I put my earbuds in, I don't want to stop what I'm doing. So I don't like to just sit and listen to my audiobooks. Um, I either like to walk or I like to be doing chores around my house and I was like cleaning everything because I wanted to keep listening, but I had like finished my original task. So now I was like, well, let's deep clean the kitchen because I want to keep listening to this audiobook. I finished it pretty quickly. Um, and I just, there, there's a print version, obviously, because it's it's an audiobook. But whichever way you do it, um, it's pretty good. So I really recommend That was another four-star review. I really, really liked that one. Um, so that did take up some of my time, too, this week. So there you have it. Those are the books that I read. Um, if anyone has any comments, particularly if anyone knows about the tone change that happened in this book, please let me know because... I don't know if I'm just making things up and I'm completely out of my mind or if I'm correct. But hopefully I'll be able to talk about this book next week and hopefully I will also have read more books now that the holiday, we're still in the holiday season, but some of the holidays have passed, some of the holidays are coming up, um, and I have some time off work, 
which will give me lots of days with nothing to do but read. So hopefully I'm going to be able to do that. Anyways, everyone have a great day.